Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. It is me, Jordan Young, aka Sneakonomics, and in today's episode, we are talking about those times where Nike fumbled the bag. We are talking epic sneaker fumble, not too dissimilar to 2018 Game 1 NBA Finals J.R. Smith. These are sneakers that could quite accurately be described as being absolute shit. Trigger warning, you might have whack taste and absolutely like some of these sneakers, no offense. And if you do, my apologies for this semi-bullying uh, veiled in a cloak of comedy. <laughs> First up, we have the Air Jordan 1 High Shattered Backboard 3.0. This has got to be one of the most disappointing sneakers ever created by Nike given the history of the shattered backboards. Consider, if you will, for a moment, the absolute majesty and wonder that is the shattered backboard 1.0. Unlike its predecessors, the shattered backboard 3.0 seems to take its design inspiration from a rubbish bin liner, or maybe some kind of s and I don't know, Balenciaga at this point, bondage gear. It must have been opposite day at Nike, they, they must have been thinking, do you know what, instead of going with a high quality, soft, plush, buttery leather that everyone seems to love, why not go for the complete opposite, an absolutely mangled and wrinkled patent leather? It was just so disappointing because, you know, we had the black toe, shattered backboards, we had the Chicago, and then when rumors were floating around that we were going to get a bread version, of the shattered backboards everybody was getting up in arms with excitement about what was set to be if you use induction an absolutely brilliant sneaker and then what we got was just such a flaming letdown it wasn't just the bin bag shininess that nobody asked for but we also got this stale midsole that no one had been asking for that wasn't quite trending yet i mean i suppose if these came out in this day and age with the whole coffee dying bonanza fiasco they'd probably be a hit but listen i'm sure you're with me the shattered backboard 3.0 is probably the most disappointing sneaker and the biggest fumblage of the bag that we have seen on a popular jordan model ever next up i want to talk about the what the series now the what this first come out i think it's 2007 with the what the dunks and the whole idea behind the what the theme is to take inspiration from different colorways and then basically just splash them all on one shoe model and this has been very successful particularly with the what the dunks i'm also a big fan of the what the lebrons i have in my collection the what the kobe eights and as you can see they're the kind of shoe that just makes you go what the and so they're meant to break necks and start conversations and get people asking you if you're okay in the head but for some reason the what the jordan fives completely missed the mark these were a grand air ball of epic proportions. I like to give sneakers the benefit of the doubts and wait until I've either seen them on foot or held them in my hands in order to make an accurate determination as to whether or not they are indeed shit. And so I actually went ahead and bought the What The Fives in the hopes that, you know, seeing them in hand would kind of turn my opinion around on them. And once I got them in hand and held them close to my face and inspected them closely, I was able to confirm unequivocally that they were and are indeed shit. I mean, they're just a mess. I, I know the what the sneakers are supposed to be a mess, but they're too much of an organized mess. If you're gonna make a mess, You've just got to go for it. I think the main reason I wanted these was because I'm a huge fan of Tokyo 5s. That's like one of my grails, the old Tokyo 5s. And the idea of one sneaker being like predominantly based on the, the Tokyos was kind of like a big allure to me. But in all honesty, the What The Fives was a huge fumble from Nike. They would have been better off just leaving these on the sketch pad. Next up, we're gonna talk about the Union 4s. Now the Union 1s, as we know, are certified, valid, no cap, on God, brilliant Jordan 1 collaboration. And when people caught winds of Union doing a collab with the Jordan 4, 
excitement was high if they could do that with the ones what are they going to do with the fours and then what we ended up getting had more people like scratching their heads than wiping their mouths you see they decided to kind of do a little bit of a throwback and fold down the tongue and use a blocked out uh, wings and I feel like on the one hand it was quite a cool historical nod to an old school tinker sketch of the Jordan 4 but I feel like in hand in person in pictures they just don't quite land correctly they just don't quite sit right the colorways were also pretty shit like I have the desert moss colorway and I don't feel like it's as bad as most people make it out to be but the only real clean colorway that's worthy of rocking in my opinion are the off noors the union guavas are a little bit too zesty the gray pair is a little bit too boring the desert moss is a bit of a miss to be fair and the off noor are just basic and safe and that's the only reason why they're wearable so what do you guys think let me know in the comments of some other shoes that you guys would like to see featuring in the next episode what sneakers do you think nike or a nike collaborator or even a sneaker collaborator in general fumbled let me know uh, the best submissions will make it to the next episode thank you guys so much for watching i hope you enjoyed it had a bit of a laugh and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already done so don't forget to hit that like button for me i would really appreciate it and i look forward to seeing you guys on the next video take care for now and peace